Hello and welcome to a bit of an unusual video. We are looking at a toy from the 1980s, in fact 1983. This is the Tomy Turn-In Turbo Dashboard and it has the original box. I've also got the original paperwork and the original console. Can you call it a console? I mean I do have a Saturn and a Dreamcast here but no this was before that. This was before I'd even discovered computers. As a family, my siblings and I use this thing quite a lot and it was so influential in my life I went out and bought a motorbike when I was old enough. This thing has some interesting features like a steering wheel, a little screen that lights up when you're driving along and well that's kind of it because my one has a slight problem. So what we're actually going to do is hop over to the couch because I don't own a table and I thought we could copy Stuart Ashen, why not? Then I'm going to tear this thing down, fix it, and see if we can't get it running, and then have a look at it. So this is the Turnin Turbo Dashboard by Tomy. It has a little uh, steering wheel here, throttle control here, which makes the taco go up and down, and would, if it was powered on, actually make the, uh, make the screen go faster and slower. It has a trip counter as a fuel counter, and it has your miles per hour in a sort of pseudo-digital display here. The little red car is pressed on the back of this translucent screen and if we turn it on, nothing happens. Yep, this one's got a bit of a problem. I think, uh, considering these are from 1983, it is more than 30 years old. Uh, what's probably happened is the drive gear has come away from the drive shaft, so it's not actually, um, not actually powering anything. Now, the problem with that is, we have to take this apart and find that which is way way down in the mechanism of this thing. There are five screws to um, undo on the bottom, two either side of the steering column, and then we should be able just to pull it apart. Interestingly, we do have the original instructions, instruction sheet for the dashboard here. And as we can see, it takes wah, four D-cell batteries that's a D-cell battery, it is enormous. Has very little power though, so that's kind of an interesting thing. Also, 1983 Tomy Corp, Carson CA, which I think is California, printed in Singapore. So these were, I think, made in Singapore. So what we're gonna do is do a bit of a jump cut and then see what's inside this thing. Right, so the screws are now out. Uh, I've taken the screws out the bottom of it. I've also kind of cheated. I've already taken out the, the bar from the inside. I had to put it back together again just to show you guys, but it's a little bit fiddly to take apart otherwise, and I am leaning around the camera. So what I'm gonna do is just lift the top off. Ah, oh, that was so much easier. And we see the inside. No, so I'll just quickly, can, I, can we even see that on camera? Ah, kind of the inside. And this sort of bit here sort of twists around. That is what controls everything on the dashboard. Well, you can't even see that. Everything on the dashboard. Well, you can kind of see that. It's a little awkward, but uh, we'll, we'll deal with it. The, the uh, throttle stick, the throttle lever, very, very simple. That comes off and there's two bits of, two bits of toothed uh, linkage in here. If your throttle lever is actually uh, jumping or there's something wrong with the positioning, it's probably that this has just slipped a few teeth. There's a, uh, a slightly larger tooth and a gap there. That those two need to align. But uh, yeah, that's a thing. It's an interesting little factoid. Otherwise, the bumper kind of comes off. We just slide that up and out. Come on, slide up and out. There we go. Careful not to pull any of the wires to pieces. It is a 30-year-old bit of kit. There we go. That's the bumper off. That's your turbo, that's the turbo bit. So we have, what do we have here? Well, we have the fuel gauge. So that's the uh, little red strip on the fuel gauge that goes down as you're driving along. Reset counter, so if you push that, this little bit of plastic comes up and resets everything here. The little red car, and it's on a spring. This literally just rocks it left and right. Interesting little thing to note if I move the other side of the camera. Wah! Here we go. Here we go. So we come to the other side of the camera. This is the roadway. So if we turn it on, wow, the light comes on. And you get a bit of acetate in there. So if we pull this pin out, boop, and we pull this up very carefully, then we can do that. Ah, uh, we snagged it on something. Nope, it's good. So what we have here is the light bulb, and we can turn that on. Uh, 
there we go. And we can turn it off again. So there's a drive gear just here, which is locked in using this bit of plastic. This is literally just a drum with a bit of colored acetate on the inside. So that's kind of cool. We're just gonna put that back in a second. Ah, being very, very careful. What do I put the pin? Here it is. So we'll just slide that back through there, through the center of the drum, out the other side, and it locks in place. Good, everything still works. Brilliant. Uh, what we're gonna do now is just creep around to the back to the other side of the camera. Wow, I have a huge camera and tripod in the way. There is, if we turn it around, all of this stuff here. Interesting, interesting points to note. This uh, black bit of plastic here, if I spin this, you probably can't see, but there's, uh, there's a bit of sprung steel and a bit of silicon rubber over the end of this drum. That's literally just what makes the driving noise. If I just kind of hold it up, can you, can you guys see that? Mm, maybe not, don't know. Uh, in order to get to the mechanics, we're gonna need to take out that screw and that screw and actually get this retaining bar off. So I will do that now. Uh, without chewing the screws to pieces. I might actually need a different screwdriver for this. Different screwdriver, where art thou? Different screwdriver, here we go. What you don't want to do is use a screwdriver which is not quite biting the screws, otherwise you'll just chew them up. Uh, other interesting things while we are taking this thing apart, if you do have one of these and you're thinking, oh, I should really lubricate it, do not use, do not use, uh, WD-40, because WD-40 is great at stripping grease off things, and if you don't believe me, and you do own a motorcycle, go and spray some of that around the rear wheel, and you'll see all the grease come away. Uh, so we'll take this retaining bar off, which gives us access to this. This is still joined to the main body of the device, but if we push it that way, and we can lift it up slightly, so we can do that. Ah, oh, the whole thing comes away. And if we rotate it, whoa, Hey, it's the car again. Boop, boop, on his little spring. If you rotate it, we've got the throttle there, reset switch there, and somewhere here, ah, there it is, found you. That thing there should actually be pushed all the way back. So it's sliding too far forward. So if I turn this thing on, uh, turn it on, use it. Yeah, use the throttle, it's very loud, and it's also beginning to crush my finger. Because as this spins around, this black bar moves backwards and forwards and moves the road left and right. So that's what moves the road left and right. So that's, that's that problem fixed. Uh, now I'm going to have to go and put it all back together. What I probably also do, because that is going to keep slipping, I feel. Uh, yeah, I might put a little blob of, yeah, that started to slip already. Uh, I might put a blob of hot glue or something on the end just to stop it from coming away. I don't think there's any pressure there, but um, yeah, we don't want that to move. So I will reassemble this, which might take a while because, because this bar here, which sits kind of like that in the system, this bit kind of in is interrupted by the counter. So it, it takes a while just to kind of Lego everything together. All right, so this thing's gone back together. The, uh, the little car moves left and right, which is cool. The gear select, it's a bit noisy, but it works. And everything seems to function. So if we turn it on and give it some gear, that seems to work. And if we turn it off, hit the reset. So uh, when, the, when you're actually driving along, the fuel gauge goes down. And when it gets to zero, this thing will actually stop. You hit reset, gives you all the fuel, resets your trip, and then you can go again. Now. Uh, I did end up putting a little blob of hot glue on the end of that little drive spindle. Very careful, I use a cocktail stick just to make sure I didn't get it in the mechanics at all because that would have been disastrous. Uh, I should have used a split washer, but, but I don't have any split washers um, and I'm not going to put solder down there because you, those nylon gears can actually split. If you've had a, a scale extra car, like a uh, scale extra car, the, the drive gear on the motor is basically the same thing and can split between the teeth. So uh, yeah, you do want to be able to replace those at some point. But, but I think what we're going to do is turn the lights down so you can actually see this thing in the dark, see the screen light up, and we're going to give it a, just a complete run. So it takes about, I don't know, 40 seconds, a minute or something. 
Okay, we are now in the dark. The camera is complaining there's not enough light. You should be able to see the guy, the little screen, and 20 miles an hour, yeah! So the little uh, drum spins around. We've got a little acetate strip. It moves left and right uh, under mechanics, which is cool. Yeah, this is actually pretty cool. In fact, if we give it full gas, then this is probably how most kids played it during the 80s. If you go off the road and hit the trees, it does it does blink a little bit. And does it slow down? I don't think it slows down. But yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, fuel's going down, the trip's going up. Oh, every time you hit, hit the uh, side of the road, the trip stops moving. That's an interesting little feature. In fact, yeah, I keep hitting it. Is it gonna go? Yep, it goes again. So that's how your high school's calculated, kids. That's the punishment for going off the road. We're nearly out of fuel. In fact, how much fuel have we got? Not enough, we should call. Ah, no. So if we turn it off, in fact, if we turn the lights back on. So with the lights back on, what we can do is just hit the uh, reset switch. In fact, I'll do it like this. Boop, everything goes back. Trips reset, fuels reset back to zero, turn it on, and then you basically, yeah, play it again. So that is now fixed as far as I'm concerned. Uh, not bad for something that is 34 years old. I am really happy with this. I had one when I was a kid. This particular one is very interesting because on the bottom, and I'm not gonna show you the bottom, uh, but on the bottom is uh, like a UV security pen mark which uh, a lot of kids were encouraged to take their toys to school um, during the 80s and the police would write down your postcode on the bottom. And I think this one, this one came from a house in Carmarthen, from what I can tell. So uh, if you had a toy during the 80s, like this particular one, and you lived in Carmarthen, chances are this may have been yours. So um, yeah, interesting, interesting, interesting. I love this thing, it's absolutely wonderful. Uh, but I tell you what, I'm gonna leave it there. So if you are liking this video, if you like this video, uh, definitely leave a like, leave a subscribe, share with your friends because that, that might actually help the channel out and you know what, I will catch you guys next time.